Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this BA-10 Soviet heavy armoured car. I might suggest that it looks a bit more like an armoured truck, but then what do I know? Well, I do know that this is a plastic wargaming kit in 28mm scale, or 156 scale. On the back of the box we see a couple of paragraphs about the vehicle, including its name, Bronne Avtomobil 10, which I've definitely said wrong. There's also a couple of illustrations, one of which demonstrates the tracks you get in this kit as an option. And of course a large image of the included decals. Cool. Inside we find one sprue, a turret, and an armoured body in separate bags. The sprue is pretty much what I would expect from Rubicon. It's neat and very well moulded, as is the turret. It does still have a bit of sprue gate that you'll need to remove, but I don't think you'll find that to be a big issue. The body is also very good looking. Things like doors and engine access panels are moulded on, and those who would prefer to model those open are going to find that to be a bit of an issue, but they do look good. The only problem with mine was that it came with a bit of a nick on the rear left side. It came out of the bag that way, which is kind of annoying, but this will be hidden by a stowage box, so in the end it didn't really matter. The parts on the main sprue are, as I said before, well detailed and neatly moulded. There's not a lot of parts here, but there are enough to get the BA-10 built, and that's what matters really, isn't it? Though my bits box does disagree. There are mould lines, as always, but they're minimal and should only require the bare minimum of effort to clean up. It looks to me as though all of these bits will go together nice and easily, and, well, I have built it already, so I know that's an accurate way to describe it. The decal sheet looks just like the one shown on the box, which is no surprise at all. Rubicon decals are quite good, and there's a variety of markings here. Undoubtedly you might find useful ones that you don't use on the BA-10 in future projects, so do be sure to keep them around. It's nice that they come in a plastic bag so that you can reseal them and keep them nice and fresh. Instructions are also included. These are the typical good quality instructions I'm used to seeing from Rubicon, which is also not a surprise. Most of the steps are simple and not too involved. There are colours to point things out and everything is easy to understand and follow. The first step says to study the diagrams carefully before assembly, but I didn't. I only looked at the first step before starting assembly. What a rebel I am. That first step being the assembly of the gun mantlet. The inner mantlet part more or less just drops right into the outer part from behind. Just make sure that you've got the inner part the right way up, which is with the little boxy thing under the opening for the main gun towards the bottom. That assembly can then be glued onto the front of the turret. The fit here is pretty good, though I still applied a little bit of pressure for a couple of moments just to make sure that it would stay there. Looks pretty neat. The main gun goes into place next. I've not drilled the end of this barrel out, even though it might look better that way. I just felt that it was maybe a bit small, but there's nothing to stop me later if I do change my mind. The part goes into place easily, and because there's no muzzle brake, you don't need to worry about how it's positioned. Well, you do need to make sure that it's not sitting at some weird angle, but it can be rolled around to any position you like, if that makes sense. The coaxial machine gun is glued in next. This is just as easy as the main gun. Definitely not going to drill this one out though. Now the turret is ready to do some shooting. There is a sort of backing part that is meant to go into the mantlet from inside, but I found that it didn't really fit well at all, so I left it out. I've glued all of the bits into place anyway and they should stay there so I'm not really worried about it. I then installed the bottom of the turret with the locking tab parts on it. This isn't especially hard. Then the instructions want me to stop working on the turret even though it's not finished. So it's time to build the hull. I really like how they've designed the keying for the rear mudguards, with pins and holes. It's almost impossible to get this wrong, and get it wrong I did not. In my opinion, this is a nice piece of model design. It's very easy to put together, and it should be pretty strong. The forward part doesn't quite have the same kind of keying, but there are some guides that are helpful when installing these parts. In short order, we've got the base of the vehicle completed. Easy. Now it's time for the rear wheel and suspension assembly. If you want to build this with the tracks, it's pretty much the same as with the wheels. You just have to slot the track part in between the two wheels, as I've roughly demonstrated here. 
I wanted mine without the tracks, so that's what I've done. Adding the wheels to the suspension part is pretty easy. Just make sure that the slightly flattened part, which is meant to represent the vehicle's weight, is facing towards the bottom. The only problem with this is that it took a lot of pressure to get the parts to go together properly. I've not done the best job of filming this, but it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. Obviously each suspension set needs two wheel sets, and as you can see I've only put one on in the video. Anyway I set those aside and then I install the upper hull, or main body or whatever you want to call it. I added glue only at the front to begin with, I put the parts into place, nudged them as they needed so the gaps are minimised, and once I was satisfied with that, and it had bonded enough to stay together without me holding it, I add glue and pressure to the rear. Nothing too tricky here really. Then there's a rear plate that can be slotted up and into the rear of the hull. This is also pretty easy and once it's there, I add glue. This stowage box for, I don't know, vodka I guess, is easily installed onto the plate I just attached. Then I move on to the, well it's not really a windshield, I guess the front of the driver's compartment. This went into place really easy when I test fitted it, and for some reason was a bit more fiddly after glue was added. But I got there in the end, so that's nice. And then why not install the machine gun here? Who doesn't want more DACA? Fools, that's who. This goes into place super easy, and I think it looks pretty good. Stowage boxes are next, and as you can see, the one on the left nicely covers that nick that was taken out of the hull. I mean, it was a small nick anyway, but it is nice that it's covered. You can also see that there's a little notch in the boxes to allow for that raised bar thing on the side of the hull. There's clearly one of these for either side, and they are both easy to install. Then I install the front mud guards. These aren't too hard at all to put into place, though there is a little bit of play in them so you may need to eyeball them to make sure they line up properly. Then I realised it would be easier to install the headlamps before or at the same time as the mud guards. I was able to pull one of the mud guards off without making a mess, and then I installed the headlamp, which comes on an interesting sort of brackety mounty thing that connects to the side of the hull and the top of the mud guard. It looks good and isn't too hard at all to install. Then with a little bit of fiddling I install the headlamp front part into the housing, I guess you might call it. This is a regular grey plastic part. I guess a lot of scale models would have a clear part, but I'm sure your average gamer probably won't mind painting this to make it look more headlampy. Next I attach the stowage box or toolbox or whatever it is on the front of the rear mudguards. There's some keying for this making it very easy to do. This little step to help the crew with ingress and egress went on after that. A little nudging and it looks like it's in the right place. This process is repeated on the other side of the vehicle. The only difference was that I didn't remove the front right mudguard, so it was a bit more fiddly to get the headlamp into place. But I did get it there, as you can see. At this point the instructions wanted the turret completed. I got the feeling that if I said no I would be visiting the gulag. So I glue this hatch into place on top of the turret. This is easy and it looks quite neat. If you wanted to model this open you could, though there's no internal detail and no commander figure is included, so it might look a bit odd, but you can do it if you want. Now back to the hull, onto which I glue the rear wheel sets. There are three mounting pins for these, and if you've got the wheel sets put together correctly, this will go together nice and easy. You can see that some of my wheels are a little bit wobbly, but not enough to bother me. In fact I would say that a wobbly wheel here and there makes it a bit more Soviet. Next, I install the brackety mounty thing for the front bumper. Unlike the Zvezda BA-10 that I recently built, this one does include a bumper. Unsurprisingly the bumper itself goes on next. This is pretty simple. The ends of the mount sit in a couple of recesses on the back of the bumper. It looks like mine is just a little bit lopsided, but as with the wheels, that just makes it a bit more Soviet, right? The front suspension part goes in next. If you are building the tracked version of the BA-10, this will be a different part that allows for the difference in the vehicle's height with the tracks installed. Would it be surprising if I said I'm going to install the front wheels next? No? Well I'm going to do it anyway. These are keyed to make sure that you've got the flattened part in contact with the ground. Then the spare wheels. These are easy to slot into the gap cut in the mudguard and onto the mounting pin. I guess you could leave one or both of these spare wheels off if you wanted. I think it looks cooler with both of them in place though. 
The final thing to do is attach the turret, which is easy using the simple tab locking mechanism similar to a lot of tanks in this scale. And that's the Rubicon model's 28mm scale BA-10 completed. I'm really happy with how the model has turned out. I think the BA-10 is an interesting looking vehicle, and I think this model has done it some justice. I don't know how useful it is in a game like Bolt Action, but then of course I've never been the type to buy a model based on how useful I think it will be in games. It looks cool, and that's what matters to me. Being that this is a gaming piece, it's not going to be as detailed as some display models might be, so I'm sure there is some simplification of detail here, but again, that's fine by me. That said, there is a good amount of detail here, and there's a bunch of bolts and bits and pieces that should catch paint and make things nice and interesting whenever I get around to painting this. It was a pretty enjoyable kit to put together, though to be fair, I have enjoyed pretty much every kit that I've built from Rubicon, and at this point I have built quite a few of them. Assembly was also pretty easy. There was a little bit of cleanup, and with the exception of the backing part inside the turret, everything fit together nicely, and there was no real hassle. I put this model together in a single stream, which is to say that it didn't take too long to build. If you are not distracting yourself with streaming and filming and such, you should be able to whip this thing together nice and quick if you want. Obviously it's not a race though, so take your time and enjoy it. Speaking of streams, if you would like to watch me build stuff like this live, terrible jokes and all, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp, or click the convenient link in the description below. Give me a follow and then come say hi when I'm live next. So, I think this is a pretty nice little kit. It was enjoyable and quick to build, and if you are looking for a BA-10 for your bolt action force, I think this is a pretty good choice, unless you play in a different scale, I guess. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I hear that's what it's for. If you've built one of these and you want to share pictures, feel free to come on over to our Discord community. You'll find a link for that in the description as well. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends or anybody you think might get something out of it. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.